The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 501. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a banker, an author, and also a speaker, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Marie Claire Lim Moore. Claire, how are you, do t- how are you doing today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Sure. Hello, Sheena. I'm doing very well. I've just for a little more background, I've, I've built um, a career in banking and financial services. I'm also uh, an author of two family memoirs. Don't forget the soap and don't forget the parsley. I do a lot of speaking uh, specifically focused on women's leadership and family career balance. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Claire, what's your cultural background? So I consider myself Filipino-Canadian-American. Parents are both from the Philippines. They uh, immigrated to Canada, where I was born. And then as a family, we all moved to New York City in my early teens. So I do uh, consider all places home. Thanks for sharing that. And what be your favorite self-confidence quote? So I have, you know, there are quite a few out there. Um, I often find myself asterisk or starring them, you know, in social media. But one that stuck with me since the early part of my career is a quote from Judy Garland, the American kind of actress and singer. Uh, And it's always be the first rate version of yourself instead of a second rate version of somebody else. So that's that has especially resonated just because I think everyone is is so unique and often depending on and it can be what school you go to, what industry you find yourself in, where you it's natural to try to to conform to be a certain way. If you consider something, uh, it could be a successful model, say. And I found myself also uh, earlier on trying to, you know, to to act, you know, corporate or to act, you know, however you think you're supposed to be. It was really when I started focusing on just being, you know, the best version of myself, where I found I was able to have the most success. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I I agree too. you know, I think as women, especially Asian women, we try to compare ourselves to others and try to be someone else when, you know, we can be just our true selves. And the more we can share that, the more people will gravitate to us. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? So my definition of self-confidence is uh, to to trust in yourself. And this means your abilities, your judgment, and your values. So it just, you know, some background, but, you know, I think growing up, my parents were pretty traditional uh, Filipino and growing up kind of in Western cultures, there would be, you know, everything small uh, as children, whether, you know, you might be the only kid not allowed to sleep over <laughs> or, you know, when you're in your teens, my, my parents were a little stricter. So I wasn't going out, you know, so as much as, you know, some of my other classmates, you know, there are certain, certain things that uh, I think especially when you're younger, there's a peer pressure element. And I think early on, my my parents really instilled in me just a self-confidence to kind of trust in yourself and in your traditions and your values. And I think that's actually taken me very far, whether it's in my professional or personal life. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And, you know, I always believe confidence starts with, you know, just learning to trust and believe in yourself. So that's a great definition that you mentioned. And Claire, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, I think there's just a lot of, there's more hesitation, you know, before you you truly have found self-confidence. And I think because there's hesitation, you do miss a lot of opportunities. And, uh, you know, I, I think I've probably had a couple rounds of, you know, just injections of self-confidence. But one was, you know, when my family moved to New York City and I was it was actually yeah, I was 12 years old. And so I was coming from a very small kind of suburban 
place outside of Vancouver, Canada, and you know, small Catholic school, moving to New York City just was uh, quite a shock. I think those awkward years are tough anyway. And especially when you move to such a fast pace place like like New York City, that did have a, uh, you know, an impact on my self confidence or lack thereof. And I found myself, you know, even at a young age, I can really remember just how much I held back even, you know, how, how fewer times I'd put up my hand, you know, to answer something in class or put myself out there. And I think you do miss, you miss out on a lot. I think I started to, you know, just gain a little bit more self-confidence as I got more comfortable in school. And, you know, certainly that, that continued. But then I think uh, in my career also early on, I had, you know, a couple of these uh, moments where I, I was able to, yeah, like I mentioned before, but look at my, do some self-reflection and, and just uh, really believe that I could succeed on my own terms. And that would be, you know, it just life before doing that was, was much more um, cautious and, and reserved. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all go through, especially as women, especially as Asian women. We are very cautious. We always like to play it safe. We like to overanalyze to the point of no return. And, and it hurts us, right? Because there's so many things that we can do there, but because we're so paralyzed by fear or what other people might think of us that we, like you mentioned, we hold back, right? Even as right. something as simple as putting your hand up in class or speaking mm-hmm. out because we're afraid that people might laugh at us for saying the wrong answer. But, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and be the person that you are today, build that confidence and, you know, help other women be empowered? What was that aha moment? You know, I think, yes, I think there there was a couple. I mean, one, you know, that kind of stands out in my head is, uh, again, this would be more when I was working already, but, you know, it could be before I had to do a presentation or was going to go meet with someone very senior. And, you know, of course, like any good <laughs> Asian, just kind of studious individual, I would prepare a lot. But at the same time, I felt like I was going into these meetings, you know, lacking a little bit of confidence. I remember speaking to my father about that. And, you know, he, aside from kind of asking, you know, questions like what, you know, what exactly are you afraid of or what could happen? What's the worst that could happen? There was one thing, you know, he said, <laughs> and it's just it's it might sound uh, kind of uh, trivial, but it did have an impact on me. So he kind of said, you know, never be intimidated by anyone. And this was a person I was about to meet. And he said he still puts his pants on one leg at a time, <laughs> you know. And he kind of stuck with me because whether I was about to this, whether I was about to uh, see someone, this was this, I'm going to date myself. But growing up as a kid, I think I was going to see new kids on the block like this. Uh, boy band. And, you know, he'd see me and my friends kind of getting excited about someone named Jordan Knight. And he'd he'd say, the guy still puts his pants on one leg at a time, (laughs) you know. And then before doing, like I said, a big meeting, my father would kind of remind me of the same thing. Come on, like, it's just you're speaking, it's a human to human interaction. You know, this guy still puts his pants on one leg at a time. And it kind of stuck with me. I think it's along the lines of how people tell you when you're public speaking, you know, you might picture the audience naked or you're, the idea is just to just to see people as individuals and just make that personal connection. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I like how your father always reminds you that, you know, they still put their pants on one leg at a time. And because sometimes, you know, when we see someone who has a higher influence than us, we like we get scared, right? Or we're right. taken aback, like, oh my God, this person has like a million followers or has, you know, written five books and there's me. But, yes. you know, yes. when you connect with people, they're, they're just, like you mentioned, they are people, they still put their pants up one leg at a time. They wake up and brush their teeth and shower and, you know, do normal exactly. things that most people do. Right. Have the same insecurities and the same, you know, hopes and dreams, all of that good stuff. So, yeah, I think the aha moment was just kind of uh, looking at everyone, you know, in such a way, because it it, it also just allowed me to make so many much, much more personal connections. Yeah. And, you know, when you treat everyone like, you know, they're they're a human being, they appreciate it even more, which which is great. And, you know, I'm glad that your father was always there to remind you of that. And, you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? So, you know, I I think at this time, after kind of that discovery and everything else, but I think I'm at a point where, where I have a fully kind of integrated life. And I'll describe that in a second. But much of that is due just to to having that self confidence. So I mentioned that I, you know, I've always kind of had a, a full time demanding job at, you know, big banks and financial institutions. 
but I've also taken the time to uh, write uh, two books. And, you know, since then, I've been doing a lot of speaking engagements on the side. So as you can imagine, I also have three kids. And uh, yeah, as you can imagine, there's, there's quite a bit of time management that goes into all of that. And underlying all of that time management, I would say, is, is confidence. So confidence in the work I do, you know, confidence that uh, I can leave the office when I need to, to step out for a school event, leave the office at five, even when others are still there, to have dinner with my kids if I know I've, I've done my work. Confidence that, you know, I can write a family memoir while balancing my, my job and young kids at home. So it's led me to more personal fulfillment because I've been able to do all those things. And I think I could only do all those things because of the underlying self-confidence I've developed. Thanks for sharing that. And I love how you mentioned that you can do everything. But I think when people don't realize, like, you can have everything, but not at all at the same time. You know, like, it's not like you can be in your office and spend time with your kids and write a book. But you, like you mentioned, you make time for each and everything, which makes it easier for you to have everything that you want. And I think that's a great reminder because we feel like if we don't have all those things at the same time, then we're not good enough. But it's really, it's impossible. So Yes, yes. And you have to, I think to your point, but you do have to make choices and sacrifices and, you know, prioritize and each day is not always the same, you know, for me at least. So I do have to just have confidence in myself and my abilities, like I said. And there are times when um, I know the that I'll need to take a client meeting during dinner and not have dinner with my kids. But I will maybe try to come home for lunch at that day. You know, so there's just but you have to be confident that you can do all of that. And it, you have to be confident in the work that you're doing and, and what you're contributing. So one, uh, you know, other just uh, short anecdote, but I, that I, I just thought was great was when I stepped out of, of work to, to, to do a reading at my, my son's school. And the teacher had actually told me about this incident that happened in the library where my son, who's seven years old, uh, Carlos was taking out, he was taking out a couple of books. So I think he took out Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then he also took out, um, checked out My Little Pony, like a My Little Pony, which is typically, you know, a, a girl's book. So he was getting that for his sisters. But I think a lot of the all, you know, many kids in the class started laughing and kind of poking, making fun. But, you know, what the teachers told me was that he wasn't faced at all. You know, he was saying, no, I'm going to get this for my sister. And even when, you know, people were trying to kind of go into teasing mode, the, even the librarian kind of said, oh, you know, whispered, like, do you want me to help you find another book? You know, and he said, no, no, it doesn't. And she said, because they're, and he said, no, I don't mind that they're teasing me. I'm just getting this for my sister. And it, it's just a, a short story. But for me, I was, that was one of the, as a parent, one of the moments where, you know, I couldn't be prouder just because I think that that kind of self-confidence, even if it's something this small, but that will take him through peer pressure. It will help him, you know, personally and professionally. And so small things like that, I think, will will be a, a real asset in his life. Awesome. And I think that's great, you know, that your son's able to do that. It's just, you know, he doesn't really care what people might think of him because he's doing something that will help his sister. And right. the more we can think that way, you know, the more we shed that those thoughts in our heads, right? Like, what if people laugh at me? What if they think I'm crazy? What if they think, you know, something's wrong with me? It all goes away because we're so confident in ourselves to do what we want when we want. And we're helping someone along the way. So I think that's a great story that you shared. And Claire, if our listeners were, you know, in their own journey of self-confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? So I think, you know, in addition to that, uh, the earlier, my, my, my favorite quote about, you know, be the first rate version of yourself instead of a second rate version of somebody else. There is one other thing that I remind myself of, which is uh, that miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. And interestingly, this quote is by <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, right? So your Canadian um, hockey player, uh, who, of course, this was a sports analogy, and he was applying it to to physical shots that you don't take. But but yeah, I think that applies to all aspects of life. And it is important, I think, um, and this is why it's so great you're doing this, Sheena, but because when you develop and build self-confidence, you, you start hesitating and you stop missing shots. So I think that's just been a great kind of reminder for me that I would pass on to women out there. 
thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And I really love that quote by Wayne Gretzky because it's so true. If we don't take action, then we'll never gonna we're, we'll never know, right? We'll just keep thinking, what if, what if, what if? I'd rather know and make the mistake than not know at all. So I, I really love that you mentioned that. And you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, check out your books. Is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, so uh, MarieClaireLimmore.com is my website. And then I can also be found on Instagram at MarieClaireLimmore, LinkedIn MarieClaireLimmore. And then I think on Twitter, it's shorter, it's MarieClaireLM. But yeah, I, I love connecting with people and social media is, is such a great tool. So look forward to staying in touch. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Claire, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Claire's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just want to thank Claire for taking the time today to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Sheena. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.